Welcome to the Fashion Department, a podcast that will explore the world of fashion and how it informs all aspects of life, from dress to lifestyle to food and travel. From stylists to designers to influencers to shop owners, you'll hear the latest scoop du jour. And now let me introduce you to your fabulous host, Tina Bracoli, a Greenwich, Connecticut-based wardrobe stylist and radio show personality. With over 20 years in the fashion industry, Tina will share her take on style, trends, the business of fashion, and her sartorial sense. Here's your host. Welcome to the fashion department. I am so excited. I'm in studio today, and I have uh, two very special guests with me. And we're going to be talking about a little bit about the business of fashion and one of my favorite topics, furs, as in luxury furs. I have Nick and Jenny. I have Nick Polo Georges from the company Polo Georges, a company based in New York City, luxury outer brand, started in the 60s by... Nick's dad. So it is a family owned business. And they now have a brick and mortar store in Greenwich, Connecticut. Nick and Jenny, welcome back to the fashion department. Uh, Thanks, Tina. Nice to see you again. Thanks for having us. Sure. Thanks for being here. And by the way, if you're listening to this episode and you haven't heard them in the last episode, pause now, go back, scroll back and listen to the first episode because it's great. And you're going to want to hear some of Nick's stories. So um, (laughs) if you have listened, stay tuned, listen for more. So, all right, let's get into it. Um, Nick, tell us a little bit about the family business. Um, Your family is originally from Greece. Your dad uh, started this this company uh, and just sort of working in the business, and then eventually you took over. You went to college, and then at some point made that decision to uh, join the family business. And are you, by the way, are you the only son? I'm the only son. Okay, yes. and you have a sister. I have a sister that's in the business. Another sister who's not really. She's helping me now in the business. But okay. Interesting. I always find that interesting of like who joins the business and who doesn't, you know, because I have we have my husband has a family business. So it's very and he said many relatives work for him. And it's very always interesting how that dynamic goes (laughs) or doesn't go. Um, And, you know, who takes an interest and who doesn't who wants like no part of it. I would think furs. My goodness, I would sign me up. Yes, I'll (laughs) I'll sweep the floors. (laughs) So it started with your dad, and then you took over when? So I took I started working for my father full time in 1984. Okay. And really, my father was looking to retire by 1994. Okay. Give or take, and he was slowly phasing out. So that's when we started. I started to get more involved, and that's when I started to bring in um, the new set of designers that we were doing. We weren't doing designers for a little while. And that's when I met the Michael Kors and Zach Posen's. Okay. And so this is when you really started to do collaborations with designers. Yes. And this is 90s, you said? 90s. 90s. So again, you know, we hear all about collaborations today. And I feel like that word is almost a buzzword. We hear collaborations with designers and influencers or actresses or models or different people or two companies, you know, Fendi and Louis Vuitton or whoever it is, Gucci and, you know, even two designers pairing up. But this, you kind of were pioneering this. This was before it was really happening. So you would sort of collaborate and do certain, like you mentioned Michael Kors. So you would do the fur for Michael Kors, that collection. We would do the fur for Michael Kors. He would sell it as part of his ready-to-wear line. And at the same time then, we would try to sell it and show it to the department stores, Neiman, Saks. Because you were not direct-to-consumer yet. At that time, or were you? Really, I really wasn't. I mean, we had friends that would buy in right. a little bit, but we didn't. We never really tried. Our main goal was to sell stores. Okay, right. That makes sense. And uh, so, what stores were you in to start originally? Neiman's, Saks, Nordstrom's, Bloomingdale's. The, the big ones. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then. You made the jump to Greenwich, Connecticut relatively uh, recently, I want to say. Why Greenwich? So Greenwich really was because of COVID. So in 2020, all of a sudden, I was asked to shut my factory down and couldn't do anything. Everyone had to leave and live at home. Yep. So it was difficult. I mean, we really make our own products 
and I make products to sell in the winter, and it takes time. So I was sitting at home for a while. Finally, we started to go. I had a small team, and I bring him to start making coats. And now comes the fall, and it's in October, and I started getting calls from certain stores, but only stores where people were going to. So one of these calls came from Aaron Lauder. She has a store out in the Hamptons at the time, and all of a sudden, the Hamptons was packed. Yes, because everyone was leaving the city. Everyone was leaving the city. So she's there, and she's looking to fill the store, and we were going to help her. We always work with her. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I've been thinking, where do I go? Everyone's going to the Hamptons, I'm thinking. So I'm like, oh, wait. I'm thinking about going out to the Hamptons, Aaron. What, what's your opinion? Just figured, get an opinion. She's like, well, you know, you have such beautiful things. You have to be in Greenwich. I mean, everybody I know is moving to Greenwich. So I'm like, Greenwich? I went like the next week just to look, and shockingly, I, I started to look to see if I did have private customers from there, which we did, and it, we just did it. Yeah. And what a perfect time. So I always like to say there, you know, it was such a tragedy and such a difficult time for everyone and some worse than others, you know, the whole pandemic thing. But I like to remember and say there were good things that came of something terrible. You have to just remind yourself of that. And I personally, my own family, we had something, you know, we had tragedy, we had good, really good things. Um, my husband had a really, and it's so weird to say that, but I mean that with best intentions, 100%. not to say, oh, my best year was 2020. Of course not. It was horrible for everyone. But what good came out of it? Like, that's how I choose to look at it or to look back at it, I should say. And then going forward, we were able to pivot just like I think a lot of businesses, that was the key. What No matter what, especially if you were like restaurant industry, Industry, were you able to pivot? And I think those businesses that were had a solid base, um, you know, a solid customer base or a solid following or whatever it is, whatever industry, those were the ones that were able to pivot and succeed. And those who didn't, unfortunately, didn't make it. So, Right. Our online business skyrocketed. And also having the beautiful store in Greenwich, which is such a beautiful town. It's yeah. a great city. Yeah. It never, I probably never would have come here if I if it wasn't for COVID. So I, I think you're right. right. That that that's exactly you know it's exciting because such a pretty town. Yeah, people are so nice. And then to be honest, we didn't even realize how many people did have homes in New York and, and in Greenwich, Greenwich. Yes, but would just come to the city. But yeah. now a lot of people like to shop in Greenwich. Yes. I know I have a lot of uh, people, I have a lot of clients that will do a day trip or they know someone that lives there if they don't already own a home there. or the, And I'll say, you know, it's really simple. It's just up the, you know, get on the Metro North and it's just north. And it's really close to the city. Oh, my God, yeah. So it's, I want to make sure we're clear. It's 25 Lewis Street. If you haven't been there yet, you should be there. It's right off of Greenwich Avenue. And in my opinion, Better than being on the avenue because there's always a difficult – there's difficulty parking. And I feel like you're close enough. You're still in the action, but you're – you know, you've got your store right off the avenue. Lewis Street is is actually pretty uh, glamorous, I think. It's got two really good restaurants <laughs> right there close to you. Um, so, yeah, 25 Lewis Street and it's – PoloGeorges.com is the website and also Polo Georges is the Instagram handle. So as we're chatting, you can look that up or, you know, give it a follow. Um, but definitely you want to swing by the store. It's a beautiful space, um, which I want to get into. So, Jenny, by the way, are you ever at the store? You're based in Manhattan. No, I go to the store. You do? Yeah. You do? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I like that. And what – so, Jenny, you are director of PR, correct? Yes. Okay. So – and you've been with the company a really long time. Yeah. I feel like you've seen the changes, right? right? So what did you think about going to Greenwich? You've been with the company a long time. You're New York City-based. What did – I'm assuming there was a point where he told you. Were you like, what? Or were you like, absolutely? I thought it was a great idea. Okay. Because you're familiar with the area. Um, yeah, you know, it's sort of my hometown. I actually went to high school in Greenwich, so I used to work on Greenwich Avenue. So I'm familiar with the area. So you were on board. For, you were like, yes. 
Aaron Lauder. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, if you didn't catch that name drop, Nick was a little <laughs> subtle about it. I was like, oh, just Aaron Lauder Aaron. said, you should go to Greenwich. Okay, all right. And then, so you guys opened up uh, during the pandemic, correct? Yeah. Kind of, sort of? Black Friday. Oh, of 2020. Of 2020. Okay, and how did that go? <laughs> you know, it was great, to be honest. I have, um, on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. we were setting up, and it just so happened a customer that we had known walked by the store and was trying to get in. And we had the door, locked doors locked. She came in and she saw all these beautiful pillows that we had, fur pillows. And she had bought some pillows somewhere else that were fake. So she came in. She's like, my God, you guys are here? I said, we're just opening. She goes, well, what what, what are you doing? I, I, I'm, look, I'm buying pillows. I said, well, here. She picked a bunch of pillows. And then I said, we open Friday morning. She goes, I'm coming with my sister and friends. <laughs> so she's like, what time do you open? 10 o'clock. 9.55, she was at the door already. Oh and she really brought her sister yeah. and all. They bought pillows. They bought jackets. And they opened the, like, it was such a nice uh, welcome, welcome yeah. to Greenwich yeah. that uh, I felt good about what, what I had just done because really it was a little bit nerve wracking. Yeah, of course. Of course. So let's talk about pillows. You said pillows, not your average pillow. These are fur pillows. Yes. And what are they made of exactly? So we make from we make fur or shearling pillows. Okay. We make them in different sizes. We have a cashmere back or uh, some kind of uh, velvet or lining back. And we make them in all different sizes and different types of furs, all types of furs. Okay. From so great home accessories. They can be customized too. Okay. We've worked with interior designers for years, so we can dye from swatches, match linings. Um, we've made uh, bean bags, puffs, um, ottomans, even a headboard we made from chinchilla once. Yeah, and the blanket. And the blanket, yeah. A headboard. Yeah. Wow. She was being photographed by, I think, Architectural Digest. Right. As a matter of fact, after she got in, she finished her shoot, and she was all happy. She called me. She's like, Nick, I'm laying on my beautiful chinchilla <laughs> blanket. <laughs> wow. These yeah. are fancy people. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's Greenwich we are talking about. Yeah. Uh, but fancy and fancy people, fancy product, but very, very lovely when you can't come to the store. I mean, I was there once. I need to go back again. I actually remember walking by before you opened, and I was like, Paula Georges, why do I know that name? I knew the name. I not. I know I don't own one of your furs yet, but um, I, I knew the name. I knew it was like, I think that's fur. I remember thinking, because it was before you opened. I don't think if you had signage or something, so, or maybe someone told me. I don't remember, but it was definitely before there was any product in the store. So I don't remember if, I don't know if you had temporary signing or I probably asked because I was doing a radio show at the time and uh, the first selectman used to be there all the time. So I would always ask, what's going in over there? What's going, you know, I needed to know about the businesses coming and going. Going. And I remember, like, I already knew uh, or had some familiarity and f some knowledge that it was a fur business, a fur company. So very exciting. There's not – is there anything like that on Greenwich Avenue? There isn't, right? There's no other furrier. No. Right? No. Not anymore. No, no more. Not any that's true. Not anymore. Okay. Well, I have to say one of my favorite things about the store besides all the fabulous product is the – uh Warm feeling, the warm welcome when you come in. You know, I don't know how often you're there, but you were there, and I saw your interaction with clients when I was there. But, you know, I was with other people, and I like how you you knew a lot of you know a lot of people, obviously, and I think that's important. Developing the relationship between clients, I think, is so important. I think that's integral. There's all these products on the market right now. Whether it's luxury or it's, you know, middle ground or it's, you know, lo uh, lower ends. I think no matter where you shop or what your budget is, it's about the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, I of course, I'm going to say this. Yes, I'm a stylist, so I don't ever want to encourage people to online shop. But I get it. There's a purpose for it and there's a place for it. It certainly is convenient. Absolutely. Um, however, there's nothing that replaces a one-to-one -one relationship. You agree? I agree. Also, you know, for furs, since you're buying an expensive product, yes. you come in, you buy it. But then at the end of the season, right before the summer, you bring your coat in for storage. Right. And then 
when it's winter season again or and cold, you know the end of the fall season you pull it out so the interaction is constant even if you don't buy one year and you have coats to store right so you're always talking between you and your customers for years, almost like you know, you go to a dentist twice a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, depending on the person, the fur is the same thing. You come in, drop it off. There's a problem. You call right away. They call. So there's always interaction to take care of these beautiful, precious furs that could have been from your mother's generation or grandmother's, and you just kept going to the same place or changed and continued to, right. to deal with these with everybody. So there, I don't think there's any other article of clothing, I'm just thinking running through my closet, where that would happen. You know, maybe shoes, okay, you might go and get them repaired, the shoemaker, but maybe they're not... jewelry, you get Maybe your jewelry, cleaned. right. But they're not storing it for no, you and not, cleaning it, no, really. It's, it's almost like going to something in medical field where you go every year. Yes. There's no other place that you do that. Right. No other product, no other place. So no. that's very special. So that's how you build even, you have a stronger relationship. You get to know your customers better. They get to know you. Right. You know them from, for you, know, you see their families, you see their grandchildren or children. Right. right, right. And they get to see new product, hopefully, when yes. they come in and maybe change and morph <laughs> and, you know, their style changes. So I feel like you have something for everyone. Let's talk a little bit about, um, you don't just have fur. You've got shearling. You have men's? We have men's. We have shearling. We have double face cashmere's or with fur trim. We have a lot of accessories, little uh, bags, kids? scarves. We do have some kids. We have to see where we have to see where we are right now because we sold through what we did have, so okay. we have to redevelop again. But we did do like even for Greenwich when we first came out, we made mommy and me coats. Oh, love that. <laughs> That's very Greenwich. <laughs> and every season we have a new line of accessories. Um, we have tons of knitted hats, uh, knitted gloves, mittens. The earmuffs. Um, earmuffs are huge. Earmuffs um, Fingerless gloves, which yeah. I own, which yeah. I love. By the way, those were the warmest things ever. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I didn't think I would be cold, but I remember I was wearing them and my, my hands actually got sweaty. I was like, wow, these are really, really warm. Like I need to have these on the coldest day. Um, it was really, and I love how you do all the colors too. Mm -hmm. did lots of things, earmuffs and ha hats. You've hats too, right? Yep. Yes. yes. The hats. knitted hats with the little bauble on top. So lots of accessories. Um, homeware, you've got the throws, those beautiful luxury throws, right? And yes. pillows. What else do you have? I feel like these are great gift giving ideas mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Are these things you carry uh, all year? Yes, always there. Okay, always there. Um, and do you get more of stuff like come the fall? What's coming for fall? Do you get do you get certain things certain times of year or you kind of carry the same thing throughout? No, we change every season. Okay. So we have basically we'll do like two seasons. So we'll have lighter colors and lighter weight tried of items for the spring. Right. And then we have the fall winter season, which is our main season. Right. So I mean, even you know, we like we said, we're doing the furniture, the the throws, the bean bags, the poofs. Mm -hmm. We're making we make ottomans, so different things for the furniture part, mm -hmm. and then for ourselves, we'll have different different items that we bring in lighter weight in September, October, maybe through November. We have some a few leather jackets, some suede jackets. We have um, lighter weight shearling, lighter weight fur, and then we move into the heavier furs as the season goes on. Okay. And it just shifts a little. And so this time of year, spring, because you think, okay, is are people buying fur now, or is it more about s the storage and the cleaning? Little fur, little okay. double. We have little double face items because you have lighter weights. So yes, too, so we have a right? double face jackets okay. and items. Uh, in the past, we used to do a lot of private label for Barney's. Okay. We developed a whole little collection of cashmere with fur trims, perfect for this season. Okay. And then we moved ahead and did that for the fall also. But you're right. This is the main thing for fur now becomes storage and upcycling. Upcycling. Okay. So if someone wants to come in, say they have – uh, a long sort of dated looking fur maybe it was their grandmother's maybe they bought it bought it at a vintage store and it's 
ill-fitting or maybe it fits, but the style's just not for them. They can bring it in or do they – can you only upcycle something from your line? No, no. They can bring they it can in. They can bring it in. So how? what's that process like? So here's an example. I had two sister-in-laws come in now that they had coats – I think from the mid '90s, beautiful big Fendi-ish sable coats, and Russian sable's the most expensive furs. So I had these big coats. So the first sister-in-law came in. She made a beautiful long sable coat, thin, horizontal with stripes, and looks brand new. And then even was able to make a small shrug. So she would come in. She looked at what she liked. I ended up taking and adding some leather to enhance the amount of material we had, Mm -hmm. and I was able to create two beautiful pieces for her. So she picks a style. I take her measurements. If I have to, I make a beautiful canvas to fit her, a muslin, Mm -hmm. and then make the garment and fit it. Nice. I love that. So from start to finish, you're involved. Yes. You're involved. What about the products that you have in store? Are you designing some, all, most... So me, my sister is my, my sister is my partner. She mostly designs, but I'm involved with a lot of the design also because we work as a team. Okay. So we create our all the collections that we do, and you know. And it's made in New York. Most items are made most in New York. Okay. Uh, do you have to travel for any of this? I travel to buy pelts. To buy okay. And I travel sometimes to sell. Okay. So we also, I was just in Korea on a selling trip. So we went there to present to stores uh, that sell throughout Korea. What are the, is there a big difference in that customer? I would think different countries, there's different cu- types of customers, yes, right? Yes, different fashion, different, different parts fashion. of the world. Okay. Yeah, I would think so, right? Americans are probably the pickiest and the no, most no. annoying. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, we. I have to say I think we certainly know fashion if you're here, especially if you're in the New York area. Most people, if they don't know it, they can at least appreciate it. And um, some of these furs you have. I love how you have, like I said, something for everyone. Um, let's talk about the website. Mm. You can, can you buy from the website and what do you have on the website? Yeah, you can absolutely buy from the website. And I was going to mention that that's really been like a great introduction of our company to buyers across the country. I have so many people that um, would DM me or email me from Texas, from California, Michigan. There's so many pockets of people that are looking for not just shearlings or furs, but special event pieces um, designer pieces, you know, we, and we have hundreds of products on our site, everything from, um, a collection of the coats, but also accessories, home, men's, everything. So, you know, not just, you know, we really pivoted during the pandemic so people could still shop with us. And, you know, there was the whole thing about people, um, Eating outside yes. was a big thing. So people wanted to stay warm while eating out and whether it was at restaurants or at home, at the fire pits, whatever it is, you know, people wanted to stay warm and cozy. And it was perhaps one of our um, most positive years that we learned about like different parts of the country, what different clients are looking for. So it, that's that's been a great point to get us across to new consumers. Right, right. Because did you find that over the pandemic, the shopping trends changed? Yeah. Like more online for you guys, obviously? Uh, For sure. Yeah, yeah. And maybe what they were buying. I I mean, as a stylist, I noticed that. Not the obvious, okay, everybody's shopping online. Yes. That was already trending up. I mean, what they were buying, I think, started to change. Because suddenly you had people... Like myself, you know, once I say this very loosely, once I kind of felt okay, I'll, I'll use yeah. air quotes, right? You know, and still getting through, like, okay, we're we, we're gonna make through that, we're gonna get through this, you know, whether it's you believe in the vaccine or not. Once you felt okay, because in the beginning, I don't think any of us felt okay. We were kind of like, right. what's going on? The world's gonna end. At some point, 
I started to feel okay. My family started to feel okay. We were, of course, still very careful and cautious and changing. And as everybody was saying, the new normal. But once I was like, okay, you know, our health is is okay if we do this, this, and this, and our finances are okay, we had to do this, this, and this. Once we shifted a little bit, I was like, well, I had all this time on my hands. I'm now shopping online. Who I don't like to shop online, but I was looking for new stuff. Let, show me something that I haven't seen. Show me brands that are like, there was a lot of people that started businesses during yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. I, even if it was like a home project, like a cleaning project, a cleaning product, not necessarily clothes. I was looking for that stuff during the pandemic online because I had time to sit in front of my computer so I'm wondering if you found new clients that way. I think we found a lot of clients that way. You know, we, we are a smaller company, and we were selling to the big companies. Right. So now where it's a little more difficult to find fur in certain places. We have people who find us from all over, mm-hmm. and they're looking for quality yeah. and fashion. And definitely they, they can see us more visibly from, you know, online, our social media yeah. Or our website. And even like an example, uh, when I was in Korea, a company came in. It was a ma- like in Korea, they have mostly major wholesalers that will sell and put items, not sell, own a part and lease a part of a department store. Right. So they would put their section in. In came this one, and it was sisters that owned it. It was the father's company, and the two sisters were running. One was in design, and one is more in the skin buying, and the other part. And this, the designers came in and told the sister, she goes, this is the company I've been following on Instagram, and I can't believe that they're here showing right now. So we opened a new account, and it's because she saw and was following us already and seeing what we did and wanted to be part of it but couldn't really find us easily right. on that level. But in the United States, people call us, and they're looking and feeling, and we work out something like, you want to make a beautiful custom-made coat. We walk them through it, and then we just ship them a muslin and try it on. We send them a swatch of the fur. We get them a feeling. And it's worked very well. And so you, you don't have to physically come into the store if you really want some. If you live across the country, right? there's yeah. a way to do it that's still very customized. And and it's you see people. I've, I, I've had women that came in from Portland, Oregon. Wow. And... She came in, like, during COVID, they came in at one time because they had a chance to do something, but they came in to see us. She's like, you know, me and my friend are probably your biggest customers in all of Oregon. (laughs) (laughs) And we walk our dogs just to put on these coats. Right. But it was was really interesting during COVID because it was a – you know what it was? It was a special time when whoever you were able to speak to and people were – they were away and people weren't really going out as much. The people who did go out and did a few things, yeah. I think, took more um, – How? what can I say? They looked into the detail of things and talked to people more. It yeah. became like it, – it wasn't like the, the daily rush of right. running right past somebody. Right, because we were forced to slow down. Right. And, and I think – like most people had to kind of reset, reevaluate. All of a sudden people realized, mm, maybe I shouldn't take things for granted. I mean, personally, I I started to make a joke. I started to post pictures and stories on my Instagram of me waiting for the UPS or the FedEx guy yeah. and what outfit I was wearing. Right. Because that became, you know, it's did it as a half of a joke, but I'm a stylist. What am I going to show? Where am I going? If I get dressed up, I was going nowhere and neither was anyone else. So I thought, all right. So it started with my husband took a picture from the back of me. I was sitting on my front steps with my coffee because I had shopped online. And I said, you know, waiting for my daily visit from (laughs) Mr. FedEx. And I had fabulous shoes on and I had a really cool uh, uh, long sweater on. So I made an – first of all, I had to start making an effort and putting myself together. It was driving me crazy. I'm not a sweats pants, sweatpants kind of girl. I never will be. Um, so for me, I was like, what do you mean I'm staying in my pajamas all day? You know, like, that's just foreign to me. Um, so at some point, I was like, nope, enough of this. I'm getting up. I'm getting dressed. I'm doing my hair. I'm doing my makeup, even if I'm just walking around my house in a circle. Um, so, But it helped. It helped me get through and cope. So 
But I did start talking to the FedEx men that normally I either don't see because I'm not home or I'm just waving and they're, hey, how are you? Do you want a bottle of water? How you doing? You know, we would kind of talk across the lawn. So I, I understand what you're saying because it forced you to slow down in a very right. good way. So Agreed. interesting. Again, something good comes out of something very horrible and bad. You have to take those positive points. Um, all right. I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, – so what were the – do you – first of all, do you still do collaborations with designers? Yes. Fabulous. Yes. Okay. We're currently working with Monse. Uh, we do a hand-painted collection of shearlings with Zandra Rhodes from London. Okay. We do uh, Michael Kors collection shearlings, which is a huge collection. Um, we are working with Bibu. Um, he's a Indian designer. Yep. Showing in uh, he shows in Fashion Week, um, and a few other designers. Okay. Well, so, we we make things with the different we we do with we do we work with other influencers or creative directive girls. Right. 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 Um, uh, and like you mentioned earlier, one of the girls, Kelly Ben Simone, you had a recent collaboration with her. Um, is that co that collection's in store now or will be? Will be in September. Will the be new one. The new one. Yeah, okay. this will be our sixth collection. Wow. With Kelly. Wow. Wait a minute. I just thought of something. One of my favorite influencers. I think maybe you did something with Olivia Palermo. She yes. Did something with her. Yes. I love her. So we work with Olivia. She's great and gorgeous style. I yes. love her style. Chic. Very. Yes. Chic. Very chic. Yes. Okay. And where she's a close friend of the uh, company. Nice. Okay, so then you need to tell me a story. So who's one of the most memorable influencers, actresses, entertainers, whoever that, that you could think of, of recently, let's call it? Anyone that uh, sticks out in your mind of like a funny experience or, or a fun uh, memory? How about if I give you one from years ago, which was funny? Okay, okay. It was the first time I had dinner with Michael Kors. Oh, so dinner. dinner. Okay, first of all, so, we'll, wait. We'll, we'll. So first, I want to say I'm Greek. Okay, yes. And our family is Greek, and we always would do um, a Greek dinner. Right. Take for Michael Kors's team and him. Okay. It started first out with Michael Kors. And where is this dinner happening? Is this like at so, your house, or is no, this at a restaurant? No, no, at a restaurant. So okay. the first ever one was in. Milos. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. In uh, Manhattan. Manhattan. And they were a very small team back then. Okay. Right. <laughs> like five, six people. So we, so we the first <laughs> really? dinner we go out, I wanted to take them for dinner. We had our first season together. And, you know, Michael Kors is a, he's a very smart, creative yes. person. And uh, he wants to tell me now, he, he says, listen, I'm going to give you a story about the first time I had any interaction on fur. So he was... I don't know if you told me he was five to seven years old, going with his mother to the furrier. Right. And he goes down, and they were picking a coat, and Michael was helping, moving, doing, helping. And he had a, a vivid memory of everything. And basically, he felt that he helped his mother pick the style, and he had his grandmother there who was also, you know, she was the expert at the field at the time. And he helped his mother pick this style, very sexy. And I, I can't remember the exact detail about what it was. It was, you know, what 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 they ended up buying. But it wasn't too long a coat, that's okay. for sure. And at the time, people, they, they weren't wearing such a long coat. I'm going to fast forward now. We finished the story. It was great. He goes, I have another part to the story, but we'll do it at next year's dinner. Oh, mm. So let's fast forward. I'll just do it quickly to next year's dinner. We're Securing with, the dinner. I like we're it. With, we're with Michael again. We're doing the whole dinner. So I'm like, Michael, I've waited a whole year. You remembered? I remember. I said, oh my God. what was the other part? So now he went into depth again. He goes, we go back to the furrier. The furrier is there. Big problem. The coat we picked for mom, lengths have now dropped to the floor. So this coat is too short. So now he helped his mom pick out a beautiful border. Now, if you think about some of these vintage coats where they have, right. like it would be, it could have been a beautiful leopard coat even, say, or whatever it was, and on the bottom they had 
rings of black right. fox or something. Yep. So he helped his mother again pick out something to lengthen their coat and bring it to the floor because now everything was floor length. But it was a story, the way he said it again, Michael's, you know, he's he's an unbelievable spokesperson as yes, he can say funny. things. Yes. And he's funny and he's very, very knowledgeable yeah. about everything. Yeah. And it was, a, it was a great story. I'll never forget it the rest of my life. And that he had that memory from when he was a child. Yes. Wow. Like seven, eight years old. Wow. So, I, wa- I wonder if his mom still has the fur. <laughs> Where's the Good fur? Good question. Where's the fur? We have to ask Joan. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we have to ask Joan. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, before we wrap, I always like to play a little game. If you've listened to the podcast, mm-hmm. I usually make my guests play. It's very easy. So Nick and I are going to play a game of this or that, okay? So, Nick, it's very simple. I <laughs> promise you're going to win. Um, you're, I'm just going to give you two words, and you're going to pick one that just – you have a stronger feeling towards it. Doesn't have to be personal. It could be what you like. It could be what you like oh, uh, to see in a, uh, on a woman. It could be an experience. Whatever, just whatever word, whichever word I give you of the two, you gravitate more towards. Okay, you ready? Okay, this or that, fur or shearling. Fur. Mink or sable. Sable. Black or brown. Black. <laughs> Plaid or stripes. Stripes. Oh, coffee or cocktails? Cocktails. All right. That's my kind of guy. <laughs> Jeans or a suit? Mm. Mind you, he's wearing jeans with a blazer, so he's a little of both. Mm-hmm. Jeans. Okay. Cashmere or leather? Cashmere. Hoodie or a vest? Hoodie. Okay. Bow tie or a necktie? Necktie. Okay. Fur lined or fur trimmed? Fur lined. Oh. Pocket square or pocket watch? Pocket watch. Oh, yes. Vintage. We're going vintage. (laughs) Leather or suede? Suede. That's a tough one. Beach or mountains? Beach. Uptown or downtown? Downtown. The city or Greenwich? (laughs) Oh, <laughs> I threw you a curveball. <laughs> now I would say honestly, Greenwich. All right. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you, Nick, and thank you, Jenny, for thank joining so me in the fashion department. Once again, that's 25 Lewis Street is your location of your Greenwich store. Um, and it's pologeorgis.com is the website and the Instagram for you to look, see, shop, all the above favorite uh, DM is Polo Georges. Thank you guys for joining Thank me. You. We'll see you again Thanks, in the Tina. fashion department. Thanks, Tina. Thanks for joining me in the fashion department. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. For more inspiration and fashion content, check out my website and follow along on Instagram at wardrobe underscore envy. And a special thanks to the Factory Underground Studio for recording and producing this show. See you next time.